pain equals no gains. I cannot be clearer than this. We have this very common saying that, you know, no pain, no gain. And of course, this is kind of silly. It gets parodied a lot. It was used, of course, as the title of silly little movie about bodybuilding, uh, which skewered a lot of the sort of, you know, bodybuilding mentality. Um, but the reality is that it's actually quite the opposite. Pain equals no gains. And so I'm going to analyze this from a few different angles, starting off with the strictest interpretation and going down to a looser interpretation and trying to be as charitable as possible in my analysis. So the strictest possible interpretation, you know, no pain, no gain means that yes, you do need to be hurting yourself. You do need to be pushing yourself to the extent that you are experiencing some amount of pain in order to actually be seeing results. And this is not true in any way. So essentially, you know, if we're interpreting it as like, hey, you need to push yourself until you're actually feeling pain, that's a bad thing. That's not good. Nobody wants that. Pain means that you have injured yourself. And that means that you basically are going to then negatively impact, you know, the strength, the muscle mass that you're building, because you're not going to be able to perform to 100% you know, normal capacity. The single biggest thing you want to avoid in the gym is an injury of any kind. And the reason for that is simply that when you get injured, that means A, you can't train. That means, you know, maybe you have to reduce, you know, the, the intensity of your training or the volume of your training so that you can recover fully. And of course, if you push it too hard during that initial post-recovery period, you can then risk re-injury, which then just makes things worse. The single greatest predictor of an injury is that you've had an injury in the same area in the past because, of course, you just rush it, you don't give it enough time to fully recover, and then you end up re-injuring yourself. And this, of course, is not a good thing, especially as you get older, managing injury is a really, really crucial factor in basically just being able to keep lifting, be able to keep coming back, being able to keep training more and getting better and better over time. And as you get older again, those injuries, that past injury history starts to add up, and you have to be even more and more careful, even more and more proactive about listening to your body, recognizing when it's telling you things that are like, hey, I'm about to get hurt, and pulling back and giving yourself time to rest and recover accordingly. Now, if we take it to a slightly less strict interpretation, so let's say that no pain, no gain doesn't mean, hey, you need to really push yourself to the point of pain, but you do need to be pushing yourself. Like you do need to be experiencing a lot of effort and it does need to be tough. Now there is some truth to this. Obviously, if you're just going into the gym and let's say that I can bench press 300 pounds and I put 50 pounds on the bar and I just do a bunch of lazy reps and I don't feel anything and I go home, then yeah, of course, I'm, I'm not gonna get any results out of that. I'm gonna lose gains over time because that is a significantly smaller stimulus than my body needs to continue adapting. You do need an appropriately challenging stimulus, and that does mean that you need to keep increasing the volume, keep increasing the intensity in some way, shape, or form so that you can continue to see an increased stimulus over time and continue to see further growth. And that does mean that you need to keep things challenging. Now, I do want to push back against the idea that things need to be maximally challenging. So there is this sort of specific cadre of people who will say things that are like, hey, Things shouldn't just be challenging. You need to be going to absolute failure. You need to be going to 100% effort. And anything less than that is basically just going to result in, you know, missed gains, no gains at all, etc. And again, there is some sort of truth to this, but it's definitely very misleading. So the reality is that we do find that, you know, going to complete failure produces much better results than just sort of half-assing it at the gym. And so this is often recommended as a way to really encourage people to actually push themselves at the gym. If you know that you're going to complete failure on a set, then you know that you could not have done any more. And then you know for sure that you are actually doing an effectively challenging workout. And that helps sort of idiot proof it against people who you know may or may not understand, you know, like what an appropriately challenging workout is. And so tend to, you know, just very commonly aim a little bit on the easier side with their workouts without realizing it. Now, that said, there's also a lot of research that shows that you don't actually need to go all the way to failure to get all of the same benefits. You can get very similar results, strength and muscle-wise, out of going a little bit short. 85%, 90%, very close to failure, but not all the way there. 
And in fact, if you go all the way to failure, it does involve more recovery costs. It takes longer to recover from than, again, going to something like 85, 90%. And again, you're still getting basically the same results. So the smarter thing to do is often not to push it all the way to failure, but instead to, again, take it a little bit easier, hold back a little bit, definitely challenging yourself every time you go into the gym, but also not pushing it to complete failure. So if you think about this in the context of the no pain, no gain mantra, yes, you do need to be pushing yourself relatively close to failure. You do need to be up there in terms of the difficulty, and you do need to be increasing the difficulty over time. But does that really equate to pain? Like, I don't really think so. You know, I have been training for years. I wouldn't say that most of the time I equate, you know, the gym with pain. Like, I go to the gym, progress my workouts a little bit each time. Yes, there are certainly times where it feels much tougher. There are certainly times where it feels a little bit easier. You know, I keep progressing through all of it. It's not, you know, I get no point in my sitting here like, oh my God, I pushed that workout till I was in pain today. Like that doesn't happen. The reality is, yes, you do need to push yourself. No, it doesn't necessarily need to be pain. You can certainly get great results out of taking a slightly more conservative approach and just not pushing it so hard and taking it easier. I would also even go on to argue that there are plenty of people who probably are not looking to be the next Mr. Olympia, probably are not looking to have you know, world-class physiques, could probably benefit from basically just even avoiding things that are too challenging to begin with. Like you could basically have people who are really just exercising for a bit of strength, a bit of muscle mass, a bit of health long-term. You know, maybe they come in two or three times a week do they need to do super challenging workouts? Not really, they can just enjoy themselves. They can get a lot of the benefit out of training without even really having to challenge themselves at all, without even have to, you know, you don't even have to factor pain into the equation. You can still get some gains, even if they are maybe not quite optimal gains. It doesn't have to be optimal for everybody. So I don't think that everybody needs to even think this way. I would say that the vast majority of people, again, just training for strength and health, don't even need to do that. Like they need to show up a few times a week. The main thing they need to care about is consistency. When you want to argue about optimal with the people who really, really want to get really, really good results. Yes, of course, those people are going to want to push it harder. They're going to want to progress things more consistently. They're going to definitely want to keep things challenging, but not to the point of pain. I think pain is the thing that I get hung up on. It's just not a good summary. It's not a good, you know, like it doesn't map neatly onto any of the stuff that matters when it comes to getting results out of your fitness routine. That is all for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I'll talk to you all next week. Have a good one.